Okay, this video is going to show you how to create the assembly for the Hydro Heart. First, open it up. There'll be an air stone inside with a tube. Take it out. Pull out this little circuit board, which is actually going to be under this black plastic piece, which just pops out. Take the circuit board, push it up top. Then what you're going to do is you're actually going to take this little float valve assembly, which has this little wing nut screwed onto it. You're going to unscrew it, take it off, put it to the side. You can see here there's a little Teflon um, washer to prevent uh, leaking. And this float valve is going to sit so it's facing up. That's an on-off switch. Okay. Now, when you're actually looking here inside the battery compartment, you're going to put a hole about as centered as you can between the plus and minus. I put it a little cockeyed to the one side, but just as close to the center as you can. Then what you do, you're going to take the Hydro Heart, and you can see on one side, you have your um, little tube with your output for your water. On the opposite side of the unit, where you can see the one hole is going this way and the other one is going upward, that's where this unit is actually going to clip on. Okay. So first what we do is we take the drill bit, um, the step bit, and we go up to the second one from the very top. Okay. So we're basically going to go right up to there and we screw right in here. Okay. We're going to take the drill and pretty much just press it a little bit against that plastic and hollow it out up into the second or third spot. It's not a big deal. Um, even if you go a little too deep on this side, the important thing is that you don't go too deep here. Next thing you're going to do after you drill that hole on the, on the little black one is you take this little hook and it just snaps on there. Now what I did is I took a pencil and I actually filled in this hole inside with um, you know, basically where I was going to mark it. Then what I did is I took the step bit and I basically screwed it all the way in um, until basically you get right to that second one from the top and then I pull it out and we're good. Alright, we made progress here so far. Next what we're going to do is take uh, the float valve with the Teflon washer already on it. It's very important. You're going to drop it inside the tub, pull the two wires through that hole, okay, and there's our threaded screw and you can see inside there's our float valve which can twist up and down. When it's fully tight we just want to make sure it's twisted up. So now what I do is I take and I put on my little black uh, uh, box here and I run these two wires through that same hole we just drilled out and basically just use your fingers, push it on through. Now at this point, what I'll do is you can take this nut and put it over the wires. You're going to slide it down through and you're basically going to tighten it from here. Um, when you tighten it, as you get towards, you're probably going to want to hold it from the inside and the outside to make sure it gets a nice tight fit. Or you can just hold the nut on this side and twist it twist the unit itself around, use it like a wrench on the other side. Basically, whatever works for you to get it tight. Um, ultimately, when that's tight, which again I'm going to do with a little wrench, I'm not going to take the time on the video to show you, but it's basically going to have to sit straight up and down like so. Once that's done, we'll go on to the next step. That's step one of how to install the flow valve into the hydro heart. Okay, one of the things I failed to cover in the previous video that you could do ahead of time, you actually have to take this switch and slide it out and then take uh, about a standard, I don't know exactly what the size is on the drill bit, but you're going to drill it in the upper corner, basically above the water line. You can see that comes out near the top of the unit. Okay, the reason we're doing that is because we have to take one water pump and run the lines through, and then we're going to do the same with the second water pump. Now, what we're also going to do, because this is going to ultimately sit in a backup reservoir and water is going to pump into the system. This cord isn't long enough uh, to reach outside of the cabinet, outside of the metal cabinet. So we may uh, do a workaround for that, um, which I'll talk about here in a second. We're going to actually extend wire onto this line um, for now, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. All right, the first thing that I want to talk about here is the actual diagram of what we're going to be doing in the way of wiring. Okay, this little button here, you can push right back in. It just slides in and out. All right, you see these two wires on this side of the circuit board? Okay, these two wires go to the air pump. You're not going to touch those wires at all. On our diagram here, we have the air pump, which is this item here. 
we have the circuit board, which is this item. And then it says, do not touch. That's this red and black wire. Do not touch those, please. Okay, um, what we have on the other side is the switch, which is up here. Okay, that's the little on-off switch, the toggle switch. Okay, and then coming from the switch, we have a red and a black wire. Okay, and then from the circuit board, a red and a black wire. That's actually already connected. And the wire that we're looking for is this one here. Okay, you can see that there's another wire that it attaches to a little battery terminal there and a little battery terminal here. Don't worry about those at all. We're going to bypass and ignore those. The only wire you have to worry about is the one that goes into the circuit board. That's it, this one here. And what we're going to do is, where it's at its longest point, which is right about here, just so it's easy to work with, we're going to cut that in half. We're going to take and open up each of these wires. Okay, so now from the circuit board, you can see we have one red wire, which is this one here, and one black wire, which is this one here, and then from the switch, a red and black wire, which is the ones we just cut. So basically, later on, we're just going to reconnect these, okay, but we have to put water pumps in between, which is what I'm going to show you. Now, the switch has got two yellow-looking uh, symbols, or yellow-looking lines coming out. That's for these yellow wires, obviously. Now, it doesn't matter which which wire you use as far as switching these up it's not going to matter because this is just opening and closing a circuit and what happens is there's going to be a water pump okay and one of these is positive and one of these is negative now the negative side we're just going to basically wire up directly to the negative but that positive side we're going to put this switch in there and basically the way it works is the switch goes to one side and then this one goes to the positive okay on the reds let's say on the other side and then when this float goes up and down it actually turns that switch on and off so it turns power to the pump on and off okay now we also have two water pumps water pump number one and water pump number two water pump number one is going to be on all the time so basically what we're going to be doing is just taking and I'm going to basically pull it loose of this wire a little bit the sheathing okay now as much wire you know this is roughly about as much as you really need to work with as far as cutting off the excess I mean that's really plenty right there now you can see that these are pretty well uh, tipped with solder and you don't really need to cut these any deeper you can if you want but let's look that's going to be water, nup, water pump number one which is going to sit in the reservoir at about yay height so as far as the amount that comes out you know this much is just fine you know whatever is easy to work with so the first one well, actually, what we should probably do is take these wires and start making it so we've got good terminals to work with. Now, you, you can see on here, I'm kind of choosing the top one, all right? And when I do that, I grab about that much wire to work with. You can see it's uh, well, maybe a quarter of an inch, just something so you have enough to get a good terminal lead. Now, this looks complicated, but it's actually not that bad. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look and we go, okay, switch red, circuit board red, water pump brown. So let's, let's just get started with this and, and get things beginning here. So there we've got two reds, and where's our water pump? Oh, there it is. And coming off that water pump, we have a brown. So for now, let's take these three. We're not done, but let's take these three and let's wire them up. Okay, we can, you can use a gray cap or an orange cap. I like the orange caps because it gives us a little more room. Um, whatever you want to do is fine. So there's one. Now for the other side, we go black from the switch, black from the circuit board, which is what we cut earlier. Okay? And then we have, from that same water pump number one, the blue one. So that's going to be our negative. So we've got our negative from here. There's our negative. There's our black that we cut. And there's our black that we cut from earlier. Okay. So now we've got one wire pump wired to each of these. Now what that means is, basically at this point, if we plug this in, we plug in a power supply and we, we turn it on, we're going to have power constantly to this one pump. Now that's the pump that's going to circulate water in the system, so that is one pump that's wired. So that is the first part. Um, in the second portion of this video, we'll talk about how to wire the second part. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab some extra wire to use it as, as an extender. Now all this wire is doing is basically lengthening the water pump wire that we're working with. Now, I really don't like this wire. It's a little 
Um, it's not quite as flexible as this other stuff, so we might find a replacement for down the road. But for right now, uh, this is what I'm going to use. And you can take a razor blade to do this, or you can cut it with a pair of scissors. You can do it any one of a hundred ways, but you're basically going to tear off that outer sheath for a, a portion of it here. And we've got our two wires, which again, this wire is about 22, 24 gauge. Not that that really matters. But. Okay, so now what we'll do, and I have to go get some wire nuts, but basically we're going to uh, take the brown and go brown to red and white to blue. Okay, so I'm going to grab some wire nuts and we'll continue in just a second. Here you go, Chris. Here's the wire nuts. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. Um, all right. So let's do that up. Um, all right. So we're going to take our cord here, and again, we'll go brown, red, with a gray wire nut. Now, the reason I suggest using gray wire nuts for this, these ones in particular, because we're only doing two wires, not four or five, and it's super small gauge, and that's what these wire nuts are really meant for. And ultimately, we're going to be shrink wrapping uh, basically this wire too, um, which I'll do in a second here. But um, we're going to take the basically these uh, wire nuts, and we're going to line them up like so, and we're going to wrap it in a shrink tube that we're going to run over the top of this wire. Okay. Now we're going to take the shrink tube, slide it over one end, bring it on down to the middle. You can see how I face the wire nuts in opposing directions, so that way you can kind of fit it all together. Again, we're hoping one day to get water pump cables that are long enough we don't have to bother with any of this. Just make sure the edges don't catch. Slide it right on in. Basically just use common sense uh, to get it positioned properly, so it pretty much covers the whole part. Then we're going to take the heat gun. Plug it in. Great start. And just go basically across, bit by bit. And the tube will shrink right up. Okay, we should probably be using tubing that's a little thinner, because you can see it's not fully shrinking down. That's about as small as this tube is going to go. Works fine for the middle part where it's thicker, but on the actual uh, ends it's not quite thick enough. So um, in this case, if you're working with something like this, I might take some electrical tape, which I'm not going to do right now for the sake of saving time in this video, but basically put a little electrical tape on each end just to tighten it up. Okay, so now we've got our water pump, <laughs> um, basically the same as we were before. And we're going to uh, run that cable through the same hole that we drilled for the other water pump earlier. Okay. This is about all you need. Okay, that's plenty. I like to tear off the sheathing just to make it a little easier to work with the wires. Otherwise, it becomes kind of a pain when you're trying to uh, put them in the wire nut slider. So, do whatever's comfortable for you. After you do it a couple dozen or hundred times, I'm sure it'll get much easier for you. Okay, so, now actually on... Uh, <laughs> On my little diagram here, I use for water pump two the blue and the brown, but actually coming out of this, it's red and white, which again, not a big deal. Um, it doesn't matter which side you use, okay, but you're basically going to take one side and go to the red, all right, or in the previous case, it would have um, um, it would have gone to the brown, which is the positive, okay. The brown is the positive, the red is the positive coming off this extender wire. Same difference. Okay, everybody. Um, and then we're going to take the other end. Okay, you see how it goes to the switch? And then it goes back to our main red cap, which is this one over here. Okay. And we twist that in. Got to make sure all your wires, this is probably one of the most important things, make sure all your wires are really well grouped and tight together. Uh, when you go to fire it up, you'll find out if you have a good connection or not. Based on, uh, based on this part here. Sometimes it's best to take them out, twist them all together, 
and then put them in the cap just so you're sure you get a good connection there we go that's nice and tight now so now that side is completely done um, and on the other side we have our um, black black and our blue from our water pump and we're just going to put in what would normally be the blue from the other water pump which in this case is white our negative and the other one and believe it or not folks that's pretty much it what we're going to do now is just take and push these wires down in here hopefully without knocking the wire nut off like I just did <clears throat> so what we're going to do is push these wires down in here now that brown wire that we extended we used it as an extender again was a little uh, not quite as flexible as the other one but we have a little cover that came with the unit here and you can use that if you want to help hold the wires in place um, I don't know actually if it'll go it may or it may not this is something we're still fiddling with well you know what forget it <laughs> we'll just close it up and we're good okay now we have our main water pump um, that drops right in like so we have our water pump that goes into our backup reservoir and it'll pump water in and we basically hook our power supply up here and our air pump will come out of here so the whole wiring job is complicated as it seemed originally and again this wire nut keeps falling off so we're gonna have to do something with that but um, I'll, I'll do this when I'm off the video <clears throat> but basically once everything is wired up you have to test it you gotta test to make sure both water pumps are working this water pump should be going all the time. You'll hear it go when it's on. And this water pump, when you play with this valve inside, when you pull that valve up, it should turn off. And when you drop the valve, it should turn back on. You have to fully test it before you walk away or else you can't consider it done. When you're done, we're going to have you actually put a sticker in here that says quality control with your name. So please be careful with this. Again, uh, just follow this diagram, which will become very easy after doing it a few times and you'll be all set. That one's on. This one's off. Nope. Nothing. 